The Buddhist discussion of pain is very complex because it's related to karma. And as we all know, karma is very complex. If you try to tease out all the details, the Buddha said, as to why something has happened, how it relates to your past karma and present karma, he said you go crazy. But the basic teaching on karma is the key to understanding pain and illness. Some people think that spiritually advanced people should not have illnesses or pains. But that's based on a very simplistic idea that your pains are totally the result of what you're doing right now. And if you change what you're doing right now, then you'll be okay. Well, sometimes it is related to what you're doing right now, sometimes it's related to the past. There's a passage where someone comes in and says, he's heard from other teachers that all your pains are related to past karma or dependent on past karma. And the Buddha says, that's not so. And he goes through a list of all the different medical explanations for pain that they had in those days. Imbalance in the elements, mistreatment of the body, the weather outside. But you look at the list and you realize, if you compare it with the Buddhist explanation of old and new karma, that all the various factors can be boiled down to that either old karma or new karma, a combination of the two. And you're never going to know when a particular pain comes up, which it is. So you go on the assumption that there must be something I'm doing now, and you try to change what you're doing now. Now the Buddha did discover that there are a lot of pains that will no, not go away no matter what you do right now. But the extent to which the mind is going to suffer from that pain, that can be brought to an end. That's what we're trying to figure out, what we're trying to tease out as we sit here and sometimes endure pain. We can get a handle on it by thinking about the elements. That's one of the ways in which pain is explained as an imbalance in the elements. And the way to bring the elements back into balance is to start with the breath, because of all the different elements in the body. Here we're talking about the properties of earth, water, wind, and fire. Breath is the most responsive to the mind. So you change your perceptions, you change the way you're talking to yourself about the breath. Technically that's verbal fabrication, mental fabrication. And you see what happens. I noticed with the Chan Fung, the people who had the most interesting understanding of pain were the ones who had the most. Because they found that you don't have just one way of breathing or one way of perceiving the pain that's going to help. As I said, pain is complex. This is why we're bewildered by it and why we search for a way out through the help of someone else, because it's hard to figure it out on our own. So we look at what the Ajahns have to say about pain. It's interesting, the Buddha talks about how a person who is sick should try to be resilient to pain. But he doesn't say much about how to do that. He does talk about making your mind like earth, that's using your perception, or making it like water or wind or fire. But beyond that, there's not much. But he does talk about how to Make it so that you don't suffer so much from the past, whatever the past karma is that's leading to the pain. It's through development of virtue, development of discernment, development of mind and body, as he calls it, basically learning how not to be overcome by pain and overcome by pleasure. And that's part of the key right there. If we allow ourselves to be overcome by pleasure, then there's an opening to be overcome by pain. So you work on that. To what extent are you overcome by pleasure? You'll notice this when you meditate. Sit down and breathe. And there are times when everything comes together really nicely. 
and it doesn't take a lot of energy to keep them nice. Everything just seems to settle down in its own proper place. And if you start drifting off, it's a sign that you've been overcome by the pleasure. You have to maintain your perception of the breath, 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 the shape of the body. In other words, use enough perceptions to keep yourself alert so you don't just dissolve into the pleasure. Because that mind's tendency to dissolve into the pleasure, lack of alertness, basically, lack of mindfulness. That's what makes it easier to be overcome by pain. And then the Buddha says you're trying to make your mind unlimited. And that can be interpreted in a lot of ways. One is just realizing that you're not the only one who's suffering from pain. Everybody born has pain more or less. The fact that we're beings means that we, we need to feed, and if you need to feed, that means you're going to be hungry. And as Buddha said, that's an illness right there. There's going to be pain right there every day, every day, every day. We don't see it as an illness. As long as there's food around and we can stuff it into our mouths, we're, we seem to be okay. But if we didn't have that food, you can imagine how much we would be suffering. And it's ready to happen all the time. And you can think of all the people who have severe illnesses. And they're everywhere. And thinking about that opens your mind. One, it gives rise to a sense of compassion. But two, it just takes the focus away from me and my pain. You don't feel like you're being treated in an unjust manner. The question of fairness doesn't come into it at all. And then you make your mind like earth, big like the earth. Make your goodwill big like the earth. This is the other way of making the mind unlimited, is to develop the Brahma Viharas. And again, use those perceptions that the Buddha recommends. It's your your goodwill is large like the earth. It's cool like the river Ganges. There's no place for anything to be written on it, just like space. This is our problem with pain. We have so much commentary on the pain. And we inscribe it and we pass that along with the pain. It just gets heavier and heavier and heavier the more we write. But if you just let the commentary go and think of the mind as being like space, there's no place where the, the writing could, could stay. It takes a lot, of, a lot of the weight off of the mind. So even though the line between physical pain and mental pain is not all that clear, because after all, your experience of physical pain will be related to some extent to your perceptions and the way you talk about it. And there are some cases where you can talk about it in the most skillful way, and your perceptions can be the most skillful perceptions, but there still will be some physical pain. But the less you're adding to that pain in terms of what you're saying to yourself and picturing things to yourself here in the present moment, you begin to see that the Buddha's right, that the pain that really weighs down the mind comes from a lack of skill in our understanding. It comes from the mind in the present moment. So we learn this, as I said last night, by trying to find ways in which we don't have to suffer so much from the pain. So Some place in the back of the mind is the desire for the pain to go away. We know that. But you realize the only way for it really not to have an impact on the mind is to want to try to comprehend it. And the best way to comprehend it is to experiment with the way you talk to yourself, with the way you picture things to yourself, with the way you breathe. 
by the way, you try to make your mind as unlimited as possible. The image the Buddha gives. I have several images. One is the river with the crystal of salt as opposed to the cup of water. You put the crystal of salt into a cup of water and it's too salty to drink. You put that same crystal into a river, you can still drink the water. There's also the image of the, the person who steals a goat. He's fined for stealing the goat. And if he's a poor person, He's going to get thrown into jail because he doesn't have enough to pay the fine. Rich people can pay the fine without any, any trouble at all. So make your mind as expansive as you can. And try to use your ingenuity and figure out different ways and to talk about the pain to yourself, to visualize the pain to yourself. Just think about how your awareness relates to the pain. until you find something where you can see a separation between the pain and the mind, or the pain and the awareness. I mean, the pain, even though it's still there, is not going to weigh down on the awareness. And that's how we go about comprehending pain. and working our way through the complexities around pain. Keeping in mind the principle in karma, that some pains are there because of past karma. And the thing about past karma is you never know how long the results of past karma are going to last. Sometimes you, you can just sit there and do nothing at all, and the karma wears out on its own. Other times it's pretty resistant, pretty persistent. And you can't bank on it ending. But you can bank on your ability to think in new ways in the present moment. So even though the past karma may still be giving results, you're not going to be suffering from it. It's good in English, so we have those two words separately. Pain is one word, suffering is another word. In Pali, they're the same word, dukkha. It's one of those rare cases where our vocabulary actually helps us. We try to see the subtle ways in which that distinction is a false distinction until you've really mastered things. And you will have learned a lot.